So the next set of newcomers, uh, we're going to move outside and we're going to talk wide receiver, Brian. And there's a couple of incoming freshmen that are that are uh, intriguing and have the talent to play. And you and I have had many conversations about freshmen playing wide receiver at Notre Dame, um, but we are cautiously optimistic how does that sound that these two might get an opportunity why don't you go ahead and kick this thing off yeah i mean for me it's it's lorenzo styles and deon colsey who we're yeah. talking about and and i expect them to play this year one way or the other whether they earn part of a rotation and notre dame does what they need to do and they go five six deep at receiver and those guys get into the rotation at some point in time or it's just the you know there's going to be some injuries, which injuries happen, right? And I think they're they're in a situation where the depth chart's fine right now. If they have injuries, they're going to have to play the freshman, which I'm okay with because yeah. with all look, I've coached receiver. I, I get this. It's the it's other than running back, it's the easiest position to get a young player ready to go. If you if you have a good system and you you know you don't ask him to say hey you need to know the whole route tree, mm -hmm. right? You got to be smart about it. But it, any good coach can get a freshman a talented freshman like like Lorenzo Styles or Deion Coles. I mean, you were talking about Lorenzo Styles, right? You know, I just tweeted something out today. Kids never played a game of Notre Dame. Of Notre Dame. He's only been in the spring. He's already an ACC all-academic honor roll kid. His first semester at Notre Dame. You're talking wow. about handling your business, yeah. right? So the, the reason I say that is is because Lorenzo's already shown that he can make a quick adaptation. And usually the kids can adapt quicker to football than they can the, the classroom. Well, for Lorenzo, that was a different deal. I think he was, from what I saw, he was the only early enrollee to make that list. You know, again, because it ain't easy. Because at Notre Dame, you know, they you don't have a year and a half of taking, you know, English 101, right. you know, gym, uh, you know. Hey, those, hey, nothing I'm wrong with saying, gym class. I'm just saying, at Notre Dame, you're not taking that your first semester. I don't think they have actual, PE class at Notre Dame you're, anymore, you're, by uh, the way. I have no idea. Just throwing um, that out there. But the point is, he he made that quick adaptation. He's a smart kid, and from what I'm told, he picked up the offense relatively well, too. So I expect Lorenzo to actually play this year quite a bit. The question for me is more of of how much, what, how are you going to use him for? And then, obviously, we'll get to Deion Colsey, but stick, sticking to Lorenzo, you know, Lorenzo's not really, at least I didn't see it in high school, necessarily an after-the-catch kind of guy per se, like he could do things out of the backfield, but he never showed the ability to like make a bunch of people miss a re receiver at times. What I think first and foremost he brings to the table is speed. I think that if Braden Lindsay goes down, I could see Lorenzo stepping into that role. No problem. Or if Braden Lindsay struggles, I could see Lorenzo st stepping in that role. And then the other part of this is you have a couple guys in, in, in Lorenzo styles and Xavier Watts, that you can use effectively as part of rotation to then do what we've always said, which is take the pressure off of Braden Lindsay from a volume standpoint, even if Braden Lindsay is playing well. The, the, the part the problem with that, which we've talked about in the past, now let's talk about the counter argument is yes, mm -hmm. you limit Braden Lindsay, but if he's playing, you know, 35 snaps out of 70, well, what kind of production are you getting in those other 35 snaps? Well, that's where Lorenzo Styles and Xavier Watts step into the mix for me, and we'll focus on Lorenzo this week. We'll talk about Xavier in, in a week or two when we talk about the sophomores. But the nice thing about Lorenzo is he brings a similar attribute to Brain Lindsay. Because Brain Lindsay's not really an after the catch guy either. And if anything, I would argue that. And when I mean after the catch, I don't mean catch a reverse and use your speed to outrun people. That's that's not what I'm referring to. They both have that. I'm referring to. You know, catch a crossing route, make a dude miss in space, you know, make a cut in on a screenplay, then get vertical. That's the question that we have. Can they really do that at a high level? You know, Braden did it once against New Mexico, but that's against the backups of New Mexico. Can sure. he do it against you know Alabama, Clemson? We don't know. But that's okay because they bring another dynamic ability. And the fact is, is I would argue that Lorenzo has shown me more in high school the ability to make people miss even than Braden Lindsay did. I think Lorenzo is also a guy that that is, has a little bit more strength than Braden did as a freshman. Has more size than Braden had as a freshman. He so I think little. he's going to be. 
Yeah, he was like 165 pounds. I remember guy. seeing him at fall camp. I was like, whoo, he is yeah. tiny. Yeah, skinny. Yeah. And, yeah. and Lorenzo's about an inch and a half taller. Lorenzo's about 20 pounds bigger than what Braden was. So I think he's going to be more ready to physically play. And Braden was not an early enrollee either. So Lorenzo right. has, you know, now going on a seven month head start in the, in the weight program. So I think Lorenzo is going to be ready to play. And the fact that he brings a similar skill set to Braden Lindsay is very important because if he can, you know, if, if he's in my rotation, you know, I've said, hey, you know, early in the year, I want to see them just throw a bomb to Braden Lindsay. I almost would say, no, don't do that. Wait till Lorenzo gets his series and throw deep, deep to him because you want to let teams know, like, yeah, you, we already know you got to worry about Braden Lindsay. You've seen him back in 2019, right? We're going to use him. But we've got this other kid that when he's on the field, and we're going to use him too because one, one of the tells that Notre Dame has had in recent years, and it's been this way for about three, four years, when the backup receivers were in the game, it was they were not throwing to them right at all. I mean, they just they would rarely throw to those guys, and so you kind of get those tells. So if you come out early and Lorenzo's your backup at X, just hypothetically, or Xavier Watts, whoever the case may be, but in this case, we'll to focus on Lorenzo. Take a shot on him early. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be Florida State. Maybe you could do it against Toledo or Purdue, but get him some shots early to let people know you can't change your defense when when Lorenzo's in the game compared to when when Braden Lindsay's in the game and that's going to be important if he can provide that because I do think he brings you know and, and he was good as a junior I've graded him as like a top 150-ish caliber player as a junior really good pickup his game took went to another level because what the one thing I said about him as a junior was I felt like there was another gear speed wise that he needed to get to and he could get to well as a senior we saw that we saw that gear and now as a uh, he's got some of the the awkwardness out of him you know trying to learn a new system in the spring vents now he gets to focus on okay I I laid the foundation in the spring and I'm going to play play it in the fall and and I and I think it's going to be important for two ways the first one is what I just talked about he can complement Braden Lindsay you you know Braden comes in out you still have a similar skill set the other part of this is hey Braden you better start doing something because this kid this kid wants to play, and this kid's pretty good. And yeah. this kid brings a similar skill set. And Xavier Watts is doing the same thing. And that's the other area where freshmen can make an impact is even if they don't necessarily make a direct impact, if they play well in camp and if they push the starters, then now all of a sudden the impact of the starters, because they're looking over their shoulder saying, hey, if sure. I don't bring it today on Tuesday, they, they just put Lorenzo Styles on the field. You know, that that's where you can start to get in some trouble and say, hey, you know, you got passed up. You you want, you want thought you had a spot locked up. You went out and kind of went through the motions. And this kid was grinding every day, and he's a baller. He's every bit as as good as you are. You're just older, you know. That that to me is where where you really can get the best out of your whole depth chart, and that's where I think Lorenzo can really have an impact. Is not just his personal production, but then you you know if Xavier Watts wants to play, Xavier better bring it. You know, Avery Davis sure. better bring it. Lawrence Keys better bring it. Uh, Braden Lindsay better bring it because Lorenzo can play slot and outside. And so it's it's a deal. Hey, if you guys want to stay on the field, you better bring it because you know Lorenzo is going to be working to, to beat you out. And that's that again. That's that's part of my excitement about them, assuming that they're given the chance to do that. And I big assumption. I believe, I believe that Lorenzo will, based on some of the things I'm hearing. Yeah, no, and, and that, and you mentioned you know the fact that he's got a similar skill set to Braden Lindsay, and we've talked about the fact that Braden Lindsay he can't be out there every play of the game like that. That's just not who he is, right? So he there's going to need to be whether it's formationally, whether it's somebody just playing the field position, you know, whatever the case may be, he's not going to be out there every snap. So and by, by formationally, what Vince is referring to is they go 12 personnel right, and there's right. an extra tight end, and that's who replaces Braden Lindsay. So right. it's maybe it's still Avery Davis and Kevin Austin or Avery Davis and whoever the W is. That's that or Lawrence Keys, or yeah, that's what he's referring right. to by formational. Yes, sir. Well, and then there's Deion Colsey. Yes, that's correct. This is the big enigma for me. Because he didn't, he didn't come in early, right? He's right. he's coming in. He's there now, obviously. But if fall fall practice will be right. his first practice. So he missed out a lot of that that learning the offense period, which the staff value so much. Correct. And he he to me is going to be the test case of just where this offensive staff has come from. If they look at it and say, "Hey, this kid's just too good not to play," and so let's figure it out, then that's going to be the the first big test. Because I think Deion's going to work. I don't think that's going to be an issue. And and but Deion's young. I mean, I've said this before. He's a year younger than than most kids in his grade. Okay. And, and so he he is a a younger football player. He didn't play against very good competition in high school. Athens Academy was more of an academic place than it was a place to you know go play the best football. 
which would explain a big reason why Deion Colsey is at Notre Dame, right? It's that student right. athlete part of it. Sure. But he's a very talented kid too. I mean, he's, he's six four. He's over two hundred pounds. He's he's got long speed. He's got a lot of talent. It's just he's not going to know the entire offense right away because no freshman learns that right away as a, when they show up in the summer, right? And we know that's an issue, right? And so this is the deal where you say, hey, look, it, 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 if I'm Brian Kelly, I'm sitting down with Dion. I'm saying, hey, you need to do everything you, you need to put into work. I, you know, mm-hmm. we're expecting you to play this year. It's up to you to earn it. And right, I'm saying that to him. Then I'm walking over into the receiver coach's office. I'm saying, hey, if you don't get Deion Colsey ready to play this year for us, we're gonna have we're gonna have a conversation at the end of the year that you're not gonna like. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's what head coaches are supposed to do. Sure. If you can't get these two kids, and if you can't get Lorenzo, this is my come to Jesus conversation with Dell Alexander. Okay, I'm going up to Xavier Watts. I'm going up to Lorenzo. I'm going up to Dion. Individual. I'm saying, hey, look, you guys better earn playing time this year. We need you. So you better every single day. You better put in whatever work you need to do in the film room, in the weight room, in the training room, on the fit practice field, all that. To earn playing time. It's up to you to earn that playing time. That's what I'm saying to the players. Then I'm walking down to Coach Alexander's office. I'm saying, see these three kids right here. If they're not ready to play this year, you and I are going to have a very uncomfortable conversation following the end of the season. So it's either get them ready or get your resume ready. One of those two <laughs> things needs to happen. And, and that, and I know you you're know. being serious. I'm not laughing. No, I am. Yeah, I mean, I know no, you're being serious. You, you, you know what that conversation is like, yeah, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Look, look, being a coach, it's a results-oriented business. Yeah. Right? I mean, right. Wh- whether it's wins and losses for the team as the head coach, whether it's not developing your player, whatever the case may be. And the fact that Brian Kelly, we feel, has turned over kind of this new leaf of, of not wanting to get beat in the big games anymore, he's going to have to be self-reflective on what the staff looks like and what they're what they're doing. Right? Mm-hmm. And so we can only hope that these conversations are taking place. I mean, yeah. it, it just, it, they have to happen. They have to happen. And we're yeah. not saying that Dell Alexander can't do it. We're not saying that can. at all. So I think he can. Yeah. I just think he needs that kick in the butt. I, yeah. I think and Coach Alexander doesn't handle, Brian Kelly's a hard coach on his coaches. He gets on his coaches in practice. And I don't think Coach Alexander handles that real well. I think he's kind of, it's all really younger. He's afraid to make a mistake. So I'd rather just put the veteran out there who's not going to make a mistake, right? Because I don't get sure. my butt chewed out. He's got to get over that. Yeah, I get so, that. If the coach gets on you, he gets on you. Yeah. Right? And then you use that to then go motivate your players. Hey, you know, I'm getting sick of getting yelled at. So, hey, Runs downhill, you baby. Need to figure out what you need to do, yeah. or I'm going to put in guys that know what to do. Right. Yeah. And then, but then you got to do the things to make sure you're coaching them up to get to that point. You don't just throw out sure. veiled threats. You got to, co- I mean, you're the coach. You, you get paid six <laughs> figures to coach them up. Go flip and coach them up. Exactly. You know, and, and that's what you do. But I, I've had coaches like that. You know, then that say, look, I, I'm, a, I'm not going to yell at the players. I'm not going to yell at a single player unless they do something stupid, you know, cheap or something. I'm going to yell. If your players are screwing up, I'm not going to yell at them. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm coming at you. Mm-hmm. So, hey, better get them ready. And and I don't think Coach has handled that real well, and I, and I think he needs to kind of get over that. And if he does, I think he'll do fine because I think Del Alexander is a very smart coach. I think he's a very good football coach. I think there's a reason Chip Long trusted him to the point where he had to have him here at Notre Dame. It's just he's got to kind of get out of his own way. And, and but that's what Brian Kelly needs to do, in my opinion. He needs to sit down and have that conversation with him because those three kids and, and the two freshmen that we're focusing on in this show, they're just too good not to play. Right. There's no excuse this year about we don't have the talent or it, you know all these other kind of things. Oh, we don't have enough experience. Hey, Clemson beat you in the playoff a couple of years ago with a freshman and a so- and a couple sophomores. You know what I mean? A receiver, right? I mean, yeah, they had Hunter Renfro. Well, Notre Dame has Avery Davis, right? So I mean. You know, I, there's no excuses this year. A receiver, none. Agreed. You've got you. You could lose two guys and still have really good football players, but you've got to be able to get the freshman ready to play. And Dion brings something to your roster that n- n- nobody else really has, other than Kevin Austin. And, and Dion brings it in a two inches taller version. Yeah. You know, and and that's the thing is he does bring that size, and and you're going to need that. Now maybe you don't need that the way that you have in the past, but you're going to need that at times, and, and especially if Kevin is is slow to be healthy. Or if he gets hurt again, then you're going to really have to do that. Because if you just think you're going to throw Joe Wilkins out there and just say, well, you know, that's it, then you're limiting yourself. Right. You need to have Deion Colsey ready to at least play five to eight snaps a game. And then as early in the season, to me, Lorenzo, Xavier Watts, and Deion Colsey are three young guys. You've got to have at least eight to, to me, eight to, I'll say this, eight to 10 snaps a game early in the season. And then how they perform in those eight to ten snaps, and then of course, hopefully they get a few more at the. And when sure. I say eight to ten, I'm not talking about 
eight to ten at the end of the game of, of the Toledo game. I'm talking about eight to ten during the course of a normal game, and then if you're blowing out Toledo, if you're blowing out Purdue or Florida State, then you can get them even more reps. Right. And if they handle those reps well, then you play them more. If they don't, then you kind of keep them in that zone because at least that way they're ready to play should their number be called because of injury or something like that. So that's what they need to do it because Deion Coles is a is too big, too athletic, and too talented to sit on the bench the way the vast majority of – do you know how – you know, Dell Alexander's been at Notre Dame now for four years, 17, 18, 19, 20, right, four years. Do you know how many combined catches his true freshmen have during that period of time? Nine. You had Kevin Austin had five in 2018. Yeah. Michael Young had four in 2017. <laughs> so they've not had a, they have not had a true freshman catch a, catch a pass in the last two years. Yeah. That's a problem. And 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 Deion Colsey, I think, is is even more of an important and I'm not saying anything against Lorenzo Styles, just because of the position that they're playing in that field position, or I mean in that boundary position. It 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 the injury concerns with Kevin Austin and then Joe Wilkins being the next guy. Look, and we've talked Joe Wilkins is a good player, but he's he's not a starting caliber player. And if he is starting, he's gonna need somebody else behind him who's gonna be getting reps. Like he's just he's not going to be an every down guy. He's not you know, any of the other guys that have played the boundary who are now in the NFL, he's not those guys. He's just not. And, and, and so it, it they need to have guys behind uh, Joe Wilkins ready to go. And and Deion Colsey is a perfect opportunity uh, to be that guy. I honestly would like to see Deion. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I'd like to see Deion kind of end up being that number two if and Kevin Austin's healthy. I agree. Oh, I, I yeah. get that too. I, I, don't, I just same. don't think Joe Wilkins is about. I think if you put Joe Wilkins in the boundary, you're not hurting Joe Wilkins because I just don't think that's his game. Sure. You know, and, and we saw that in the spring. I mean, he made that nice catch on, on Cam Hart, but he was very well covered. There was a couple snaps where Ryan Barnes just rode him out of bounds. I mean, he just, he's not a boundary receiver. Yeah. I mean, you're playing him there at a necessity. Sure. And then now, now that you're not putting Joe Wilkins in position to be as successful as he can be. Sure. You know, he he's a guy that needs space. He needs to be able to work zones and things like that. And that's why I think the X position is really ideally where he needs to play. But you're going to have to play him there because he's the only other guy with Kevin Austin that has any size if you're not willing to get Deion Colsey ready. but I, So that's, again, what I talked about earlier with Lorenzo Styles. That's another area where Deion Colsey can impact the roster just beyond just his own production is – if he can give you, if he can give you enough confidence to be that number two guy that you can play Joe to the field more, again, that makes your whole depth chart better. And those things are all part of the process. So, Brian, let's talk about another pass catcher uh, or a potential pass catcher that is a newcomer as well, and that's at the tight end position. We all know Michael Mayer; he's not a newcomer. He he has mm -hmm. uh, announced his presence with authority, as you said. Uh, well, yesterday. except for you know, except to pro pro football focus. Well, I mean, you know, he can't be perfect. Um, and so, but there there is a freshman uh, who would be considered a newcomer who has every opportunity to work his way up the depth chart. And frankly, if mm -hmm. they use tight ends the way they've been using them, I mean, even if he's the third string tight end, he's going to get mm -hmm. be getting playing time and he's going to affect what this offense is doing. That's Kane Barong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kane's an interesting kid, Vince, because, you know, he's in a situation where being an early enrollee, he got a chance to get in the weight room. You know, when he showed up, they actually asked him to lose weight. Because he had kind of really? pumped up the two. I mean, he was good. I mean, he pumped up the two forty, put in a lot of work, and and they say, hey, look, let's slow me down. That's kind of that's kind of the the mo for for Coach Bayless is let, we're going to we're going to build you up. Right. Don't you worry right. about that. We need you to come in as a blank right. slate, and and, and <laughs> partly because of the role they want him to play. They want him to kind of early on play that Tommy Tremble type of role, that fullback, that wing back, that guy that can move around, use his athletics because. Kane's an interesting player because he's not a real big guy. At least he wasn't in high school. Again, he's put on some good weight. He's about six four. And, you know, when I first – when Notre, he first got to Notre Dame or committed to Notre Dame, he was like 215 pounds. I'm like, well, this kid's going to be like a, a stretch the field. Why and then you watch playing it, like physical blocker, you yeah. know. And, and so he brings some of that 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 Tommy Tremble traits. But I would argue he's probably a little thicker than Tommy, especially as a freshman. He's taller than Tommy. And so now it's like, okay, well, if you want to fill that role that Tommy Tremble – brought he's going to have a chance to do that i think kevin bauman will as well but that's who i think kane is going to battle but i, I think the the way he played and we, we could bring mitchell evans in this conversation too but i, I think kane barong is the is the better option because i think he can play that fullback role mm -hmm. 
And, and so uh, I think that's an area where we could see him playing early on. And then from that, because he does have speed, you can do some interesting things with him, you know, wheel routes, under routes, you know, slide routes. The, they used to run this tight end screen back in the day, Vince. Remember, they would bootleg mm -hmm. and they'd bring the tight end underneath. And so the receivers would actually be blocking downfield. Then they'd, they'd throw that little dump off to the tight end on a bootleg and they'd be blocking downfield. The receivers and backs would be blocking downfield for him. So, I mean, I could see him being a guy like that because I think he's a guy that can stretch the field in certain ways. And so I think Kane Barong's another kid who, if he can have a good fall camp, he's going to have a chance to, to make an impact this year because he's another guy that I don't know if I see him as a five-year player. If he's as good as we think he's going to be. I don't know if he's a five-year guy. So don't worry he's about a, he's, yeah. not saying he's a Michael Mayer going to leave in three years kind of guy, but but I think he's more of a four-year guy. And and then you also protect him if he does get hurt. You can then have a medical instead of just losing a year. Because the way it works is a medical, you only get that fifth year from a medical or that additional year from a medical if it's, you know, you have to have, uh, like, so you can't redshirt as a freshman. And then you you get like an additional year because you got hurt. You've already used your red shirt, right? Like this, though it's it's a, it's a convoluted rule. It's kind of stupid if you ask me, but that's just it's an NCA rule. But whatever. So to me, he's just more of a four year player. And you know, but but then well, so like I'm that's referring to kind of sixth year is what I'm referring to. The fifth year basically is if you have a red shirt as a freshman and then you have a medical, you just lose a year. You don't play. You right. don't get that red shirt back. And and so that's kind of where I come from with that. It's it's he's a guy that to me I look at and I say, man, this kid that um, has a chance to be a really key part of this rotation this year because he brings a different skill set than Michael Mayer and right George Takis. That's I, I would the other love, part to this. I would love to see him in that fullback uh, spot and you know them do some things with him from that fullback spot. You know. Uh, you know, have him get into the flat from the fullback position, not just, okay, he's in the fullback spot, he's blocking. You know what I mean? Like, you can mm -hmm. use him um, in, in the pass game, even though you bring him in as the fullback. And we never really saw that um, in the past, right? When when yep. they would bring in the fullback, it would just, he's the lead blocker, and that's it. Uh, right. So I think there's some things that you can do with the fullback uh, in the passing game, and I think he would fit that mold uh, very, very well.